Imagine this. You're walking through a lush green forest, the sun filtering through the leaves above. Suddenly, you come across a massive ancient temple, its walls adorned with intricate carvings and symbols. It looks like something from a lost civilization. You step closer, and as you do, you realize that this isn't just any old temple. It's a time capsule, a window into the past, showing you how humans first started to grow food and domesticate animals. This is where the story of civilization begins, and it's a story that will shock you. In the early days of human history, most people were hunter-gatherers. They roamed the land, following herds of animals and gathering wild plants for food. It was a tough life, full of uncertainty and constant movement. But then, something incredible happened. Some groups of people started to figure out how to grow their own food and domesticate animals. This shift from hunting and gathering to farming and herding changed everything. When humans started to grow crops and raise animals, they suddenly had much more food than before. This abundance of food allowed populations to grow much larger and denser. Instead of small, nomadic groups, people could now live in larger, more settled communities. These communities eventually turned into villages, towns, and even cities. With more food, people could focus on things other than just survival. They could develop new technologies, create art, and build complex societies. The ability to produce food also led to the development of powerful empires. Areas with rich soil and abundant resources, like the Fertile Crescent in the Middle East, became centers of civilization. These regions had the advantage of domesticating a wide variety of plants and animals, which gave them a head start in the race to build complex societies. The Fertile Crescent, for example, was home to the Sumerians, who developed one of the first writing systems and built impressive cities. But not all parts of the world had the same advantages. Some regions, like the Arctic or deserts, were simply too harsh to support large-scale agriculture. These areas remained home to hunter-gatherers or small, scattered communities. Other areas, like California, the Argentine Pampas, and parts of Australia, had the potential for farming and herding, but didn't develop these skills until much later. This is one of the big mysteries of human history. Why did some places develop food production early on, while others lagged behind. To understand this, we need to look at the specific plants and animals that were domesticated. In the Fertile Crescent, people domesticated crops like wheat and barley, and animals like sheep, goats, and cattle. These species were well suited to the local environment and provided a reliable source of food. In other parts of the world, the plants and animals were not as easily domesticated. For example, the wild ancestors of modern cattle were large, aggressive animals that were hard to tame. In contrast, the wild ancestors of sheep and goats were smaller and more manageable. Another factor that played a role was the spread of domesticated plants and animals. In some areas like Europe and Asia, these domesticates spread relatively quickly. People in these regions could adopt the crops and animals that had been domesticated elsewhere giving them a boost in their own development. In other parts of the world, like the Americas and Australia, the spread of domesticates was much slower. This is partly because of geographical barriers like oceans and mountain ranges that made it difficult for these species to spread. The development of food production also had a significant impact on warfare and conquest. Domesticated animals, like horses and camels, gave some groups a military advantage. These animals could be used for transportation and in battle, allowing these groups to conquer and control large territories. Additionally, the close contact between humans and domesticated animals led to the spread of diseases. When these groups came into contact with people who had not been exposed to these diseases, the results were often catastrophic. For example, when European colonizers arrived in the Americas, they brought with them diseases like smallpox, which devastated indigenous populations. The story of food production is a story of inequality. Some groups, like those in the Fertile Crescent, had a head start and became the halves of history. They developed powerful empires, literacy, and advanced technologies. Other groups, like those in the Americas and Australia, were the have-nots. They were often conquered and subjugated by more technologically advanced groups. But why did this happen? Why did some areas develop food production early on while others did not? there are several factors to consider. One is the availability 
of domesticable plants and animals. Some regions had a greater variety of species that could be domesticated, giving them a head start. Another factor is the climate and geography of the region. Areas with mild, temperate climates and fertile soil were more suitable for agriculture than areas with harsh, arid conditions. Finally, the spread of domesticated species played a crucial role. Areas that were more connected to other regions, through trade routes and cultural exchanges, had a better chance of adopting these species. The impact of food production on human history cannot be overstated. It allowed for the development of complex societies, powerful empires, and advanced technologies. It also led to the spread of diseases and the conquest of less technologically advanced groups. The story of food production is a story of human ingenuity and adaptability, but it is also a story of inequality and conquest. Let's take a closer look at some of the key regions where food production first developed. The Fertile Crescent, located in the Middle East, is often called the Cradle of Civilization. This region had a variety of domesticable plants and animals, including wheat, barley, sheep, goats, and cattle. The domestication of these species allowed the Sumerians, Babylonians, and other ancient civilizations to flourish. They developed advanced irrigation systems, writing, and complex social structures. In East Asia, particularly in China, rice and millet were among the first crops to be domesticated. These crops were well suited to the region's climate and soil, and they provided a reliable source of food. The domestication of rice, in particular, led to the development of large, settled communities, and eventually to the rise of powerful dynasties. In the Americas, the story of food production is different. The Americas had a variety of domesticable plants, including maize, corn, potatoes, and beans. However, the domestication of these crops happened much later than in the Fertile Crescent and East Asia. The Americas also had fewer domesticable animals, which limited their ability to develop powerful empires. Despite these challenges, the Aztecs, Mayans, and Incas built impressive civilizations with advanced technologies and social structures. In Africa, the story of food production is complex and varied. The Sahel Zone, located just south of the Sahara Desert, was one of the first areas to develop agriculture. Crops like sorghum and millet were domesticated here, and these crops provided a reliable source of food. However, the spread of agriculture in Africa was slower than in other regions, partly because of the diverse range of environments and the presence of diseases like tsetse fly, which made it difficult to domesticate animals. In Australia, the story of food production is unique. Indigenous Australians were hunter-gatherers until European colonization. The harsh, arid conditions of much of Australia made it difficult to develop agriculture. However, some areas, like the Murray-Darling Basin, had the potential for farming and herding. Despite this, the indigenous people did not develop these skills until much later. The development of food production also had a significant impact on the environment. As humans started to farm and herd, they began to alter the landscape. They cleared forests to make way for fields, built irrigation systems to water crops, and domesticated animals that changed the ecosystem. These changes had long-lasting effects on the environment, some of which are still visible today. The spread of domesticated plants and animals also had a significant impact on human health. The close contact between humans and domesticated animals led to the spread of diseases. Some of these diseases, like smallpox and measles, were highly contagious and had a devastating impact on populations that had not been exposed to them before. The spread of these diseases often preceded the arrival of European colonizers, weakening indigenous populations and making them more vulnerable to conquest. The story of food production is also a story of innovation. As humans developed new ways to grow food and domesticate animals, they also developed new technologies. For example, the plow, which was invented in the Fertile Crescent, allowed farmers to till the soil more efficiently. The invention of irrigation systems allowed farmers to grow crops in areas with limited rainfall. These innovations were crucial in the development of complex societies and powerful empires. The spread of domesticated plants and animals also had a significant impact on trade and commerce. As different regions developed their own crops and animals, they began to trade with each other. This trade not only provided a way to exchange goods, 
but also led to the exchange of ideas and technologies. For example, the Silk Road, a network of trade routes that connected China to the Mediterranean, was a major conduit for the spread of ideas and technologies. The story of food production is also a story of cultural exchange. As different regions developed their own agricultural practices, they also developed their own cuisines, traditions, and beliefs. The exchange of crops and animals often led to the exchange of cultural practices. For example, the spread of rice cultivation from East Asia to Southeast Asia led to the spread of rice-based cuisines and religious practices. The story of food production is a complex and multifaceted one. It is a story of human ingenuity and adaptability, but it is also a story of inequality and conquest. The development of food production allowed some groups to become the haves of history, while others became the have-nots. The haves developed powerful empires, advanced technologies, and complex societies, while the have-nots were often conquered and subjugated by more technologically advanced groups. The story of food production is still relevant today. As we face new challenges like climate change and food security, we can learn from the past. The lessons of food production can help us develop new ways to grow food and manage resources sustainably. The story of food production is a reminder of the incredible impact that human ingenuity and adaptability can have, but it is also a cautionary tale about the consequences of inequality and conquest. In conclusion, the development of food production is one of the most significant events in human history. It allowed humans to settle in larger, more complex communities, develop advanced technologies, and build powerful empires. However, it also led to the spread of diseases and the conquest of less technologically advanced groups. The story of food production is a story of human ingenuity and adaptability, but it is also a story of inequality and conquest. As we look to the future, we can use the lessons of the past to build a more equitable and sustainable world.